The flaming burning turtle boy is back and he is better than ever. That's right, Fragonoth is back. And if you missed out on the very first event in the game, which was actually the Fragonoth raid, you missed out on Celery and you also missed out on Pele, but you missed out on taking out this big boy. So this <laughs> this big boy is actually pretty tough. This is a pretty tough battle. Uh, remember, this is Master. If you are a newer player, you probably won't be able to beat this on Master. You might need to just do this on Expert mode so you can just, you know, get the... Uh, the pieces for the trade shop and the astral raid shop, and uh, that was that was a lot of shops. Uh, but you know what I mean. Get your astral raid pieces, get your um, get your augments, get everything like that. Granted, these are only HP augments, so it's not even that bad if you can't complete the master challenge. Again, HP augments don't really contribute to DPS, so. Oh yeah, so that said, you know, don't stress too much if you can't do this. But anyways, this video, it's going to be a somewhat short video. I just want to kind of discuss some tips to help get the clear on the Fragonoth raid. Uh, now this is, like I said, Astro Raid's master difficulty. I've seen a lot of people actually struggle with this, you know, myself included at first. This was a tough battle to get the hang of. Uh, so yeah, this is just kind of my tips to get the clear on this. So first of all, this video that I'm showing is not optimized at all. You know, I've had a much better clear as you can tell when the video is over. I have cleared it before and I have cleared it deathless before, but this footage is not deathless because it, honestly, it takes a while to do deathless. You kind of have to get lucky. Your AI has to just not be in his way because Fragonoth, most of his attacks are iframeable, but of course the AI does not iframe often. <laughs> and uh, the AI, like I said, if you are not iframing it then the ai does not iframe it and you have to time everything well etc etc but anyways uh, let's just hop into the tips so first of all like i said at the very beginning of this fight if you want to rewind the footage just to make sure and check what i was doing basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to wait that's right you wait you don't attack him you just wait at the very beginning of the fight you want to wait he's going to do his um his overdrive little slam thing at the beginning he's going to do three lines of flame shootings and then he's going to walk around a little bit and then do his tail spin. Uh, he might not walk around actually at the beginning. I'm not sure if he walks around, but other times in the fight, he does walk around before he does his tail spin. Uh, but so yeah, you want to wait till after that tail spin, then you go and attack him. At other points in the fight, uh, before his tail spin, like I said, he walks around. He also does the flamethrower little like thing where he you know shoots fire out of his mouth. He does those. So if you see him doing those, uh, you might want to start getting a little bit away so you can you know either four strike away or just get out of range of his tail hit because that is actually what takes out most of uh, the units that are here. Again, uh, for the units, you don't need to use burn resistance units. You can use stun res easily. If you have a Xander, you know, Xander is great since you do want to break his overdrive as fast as possible. Like I said, you don't need burn res. Stun res works just fine. Again, as for co abilities, I actually recommend you bring uh, an HP and a defense co ability as I did on this team. You know, I have a lance and I have an axe. They bring the HP and defense co abilities. If you have someone with 50 mana circles and those co abilities, that is really great because, again, that's either 50% HP or 50% defense or whatever the case is. And that really does help out. You could also run two healers, and that is nice. Uh, again, two healers, uh, since DPS is not a big issue for this fight, two healers works just fine. Uh, you know, Daniel and Nurse Aileen are probably the two best ones that you can run here. And then you can also, again, there's the summer units that were just released. If you have them, run them. They're going to do really good in this fight. Uh, and those are all, honestly, all I have to say about the units. As for worm prints you should run, just run a bunch of defensive prints, honestly. Uh, if you don't know how to sort or look at your defensive prints, if you go to the worm print selection tab, at the very bottom, I believe bottom right, it shows sort. You click on sort, and then it should show uh, defensive, and you either check that or you check on flame, or it's, I think it's anti-flame. You check one of those two. Don't check them both. Just check one of those two, and you should be able to check your defensive worm prints that are going to be good for for this raid. Again, I do recommend you just run a whole bunch of defensive prints. Uh, you don't need to, but I do recommend you do because that's probably gonna be the easiest way to survive. Again, I believe I was running uh, like six defensive prints uh, like oh, throughout my team on this uh, raid. So I do recommend you bring defensive prints. It's gonna really help keep your team alive, especially if you're going for the deathless. Another strategy is you could use Phoenix with a, you know, a Phoenix healer, but that's not going to be too great since the healer is probably going to end up dying really quickly unless you have a lot of good flame res units. Again, the best flame res print for this event is probably going to be Crystallian Envoy since it does give you an attack boost as well as a nice flame res boost. But that is just something I want to know. Again, range units also have less defense. So Lily in this fight isn't amazing. However, she is good because she has nice burst damage at the beginning, which can help you break him faster as well as get him into overdrive. Um, you know, well, not like end into overdrive, but end his overdrive faster, which means that you can cancel the volcano's attack at the very beginning, which is a nice strategy you could do if you're struggling, if you're losing units at that volcano part. So yeah, that is honestly all the tips I have. Again, you want to aim for the tail. I've been talking about a tail a bunch. 
aim for his tail. Uh, you don't want to stand in front of him because again, that's where most of attacks, most of his attacks actually go for, go go for, like you know, you know, right in front of him. So don't stand right in front of him. Uh, aim for the tail. Run defensive prince. Two healers is a nice possibility. And again, just attack the same volcano as the rest of your team. If they're all attacking the one farthest away, go for that. But you do want to attack the one that is closer to him since you can actually get some DPS in as you're attacking the volcano. Those are all the tips I have. I'm a big fan of this fight. It was a lot of fun. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. If you didn't enjoy, you know what to do. Uh, let me know what you think about this Asherite fight in the comments down below. Were you able to clear it? I would offer some clears, but... Uh... <laughs> I used up all my pieces already, and I'm sure most people in Discord did, but you can hop into the Discord and ask if you need some help. Again, there is a giveaway going on right now. It should be ending soon. Thank you guys so much for the support. I appreciate everything. Have yourselves a great day, and until next time, have a nice trip.